Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 12 today, verses 12 and 13. Let's read it. For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So God says he will strike down the firstborn, all the firstborn of Egypt that night, and he's going to uh, pass out judgments against all the gods of Egypt. This is a very telling remark, and I found an extended passage in uh, Stuart, Douglas Stewart's commentary I want to share with you. I don't like to read you long bits, but this is going to be worth it. Try this out. The Egyptians were devoted to their gods and trusted them fully. The Israelites, during their 430 years sojourn in Egypt, probably had picked up much of that same attitude toward the Egyptian gods. Since such gods could not save, it was appropriate for God to dissuade those who would sincerely seek the truth from holding to a belief system that would guarantee their ultimate destruction. Good God, therefore, made sure that the belief system of the Egyptians, and for that matter, all pagan cultures by logical extension, was exposed as fraudulent and foolish. Since trust in a variety of gods was at the heart of the belief system, exposing a variety of gods as nothing, unable to save, unable to grant life, and unable to defend Egypt and the Egyptians against the god of the Hebrews, was a convincing method of forcing people to look elsewhere than their discredited gods for salvation. The evangelist turns people away from bad news, no matter how attractive it might look, and toward the good news. And so, this is page... 279, but God here is executing judgment against the, the gods, the fake gods, the small g gods of the Egyptians, because they're fake. They're, there's nothing there. They can do, these fake gods, they're, they're in the idea, idea realm. There's nothing that these fake gods can do for the Egyptians. They're all their worship and uh, different things they're doing is nothingness. There, there's nothing there. It's absolutely a zero. It's not like God, when he says he's a jealous God, you know, he's He's sort of jealous of the sun god over here, or the crocodile god over there, or, or some of the other ones we've spoken of. They are nothing. They, there's nothing there. And you've got a whole people here, the Egyptian people, uh, doing all this worship of all this stuff. It's all nothingness. There's nothing they can do for them. So God, in his mercy, comes in and he makes a demonstration. Oh, this is, uh, this is one of your big gods. He picks him off. This is one of your gods. Sorry, not a real god. And God goes through and shows that there's nothing there. Finally, in the ninth plague we just had, now we're coming to the tenth plague, darkness. You know, the sun god was the primary, the, the ultimate god of Egypt was the sun god. God comes in and says, okay, three days of darkness. Try this on for size. So there's nothing there. Uh, and the Egyptians have been shown that their whole set of beliefs Oh, I guess God's not very multicultural here, is he? But what if the whole culture is based on death? I mean, there's no life in any of this, so it's obviously based on death. So God, in his mercy, it may look harsh. It looks like, you know, the cattle are being, bo there's boils here and, and lice and so on. But God, in his mercy, is trying to get their attention. Is that a bad thing? You know, like if that's what he's got to do to get our attention, sometimes he's got to take strong steps. Some of us have, have had experiences in our life that, uh, were pretty remarkable experiences uh, right there at the edge of life and death, but God got our attention. So I guess what I'm saying is that it, it's actually quite a service to the people of Egypt that God is showing that their belief in their fake gods is totally unjustified. It's not a matter that God's trying to find other gods to beat up. It's, you know, there's nothing there. It's like you guys are You've got a bunch of fire extinguishers. You've got a big fire going on. You could have a fire at any time, and these are all empty. They're not going to do anything for you. God is showing that those are empty fire extinguishers. You better regroup and get ready because I, I can help. I can do something for you. They can't do anything for you except waste the probation, the life you've been given. They can waste. You can waste your time worshiping these fake gods and wind up going nowhere. Finally, one other thought here. God doesn't need the blood. Remember what it says here, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. God doesn't need the blood to know who's on his side, does he? I mean, come on. God has all knowledge. He knows exactly in that home, if there's six people or 16 people in that home, he knows exactly which ones are on his side and which ones are, 
are following self-service and are not really committed to him. He knows it all. But see, the sign is for the Hebrews themselves, the blood on the doorpost and so on. See, if after the nine previous plagues, by now they weren't bold enough to mark their dwelling with the blood of the sacrifice following God's instructions, they might not have really had faith really to leave Egypt anyway. Remember, we, this is openly, publicly marking your house with the blood of the abomination to the Egyptians. This would not go over well with the Egyptians. And remember also, this blood represents ultimately Jesus. And so they're publicly expressing their faith in Jesus here in a situation of oppression. They're following God's counsel. They're doing what he says. They're acting publicly, openly upon their faith. And so this sign that God gives them, that they actually enact by themselves doing it, this is actually for them. This is strengthening their faith. But kind of in the same way, I might add, like keeping the Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, not Sunday, the seventh day, Friday, sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. Keeping that publicly, you know, in the morning when the car starts up and people are laying in bed and they hear their neighbor's car start up, zoom, oh, that's, the, that's our neighbors are going to church again because it's the Sabbath. It's a public demonstration of one's faith. It's a public, visible sign of obedience to God. And what the Hebrews are doing here is they're acting out their faith, they're publicly demonstrating their faith in Yahweh. All right, we'll leave it there and come back tomorrow morning for the next, begin the next segment here. God bless you today.